Hey guys, welcome to another show off series in which I showcase a game that I've been enjoying playing in my spare time. This time around will be Death State, and um, Death State, and there's a whole lot of things I like really have been enjoying about this game. So um, I will apologize in advance if I mention other similar rogue light games as um, obviously those who are familiar with the genre will be very tempted to make comparisons to it but um, nevertheless it, uh, I would at least try to emphasize on just some of those effects without really just sort of just like confusing you really if you're not familiar with other roguelike games such as the The Binding of Isaac, um, Rogue Legacy, some other things. Um, so so basically what I'm doing now is that I'm, I'm, I'm just ba you basically it's been described as a, a roguelike single stick sugar shooter and uh, the emphasis on the single stick because basically all I'm doing is actually moving my character around the firing is actually done automatically which actually I think is a quite a neat design decision and um sort of just goes in line with the general theme that I think the game at least like the get what kind of game it's trying to be in with regards to his audience and basically I get the impression is that it's just meant to be an easier work light in that it's not as demanding or not as difficult or it does not require as um I suppose as much skill though some may choose to dis disagree on that mainly because um ultimately this is still a uh, ultimately this is has a few more bullet hell type elements as we will see later so I'm basically playing at the the first character that you'll get when you when you boot up this game so that you know um I, I will eventually show you the other characters which are definitely unlockable but for now I don't just want to actually well I mean I mean I will eventually spoil a fair amount of the game's elements but um but I don't think that's really too much of a problem so what's the main goal the main goal the main goal of this game is that there's obviously an end stage where there's just like just big giant boss that you need to kill there's um basically four main um I want to say floors but I, I guess a better description would be like um worlds in which in each of these worlds there's four layers where if you I think it's best described if you look at the top right so the the world we're in right now is called the Fortress of Koth and that we're basically on layer one which is sort of like level one out of four of this fortress all right so onto onto the general gameplay at um if you look in the bottom left there is basically a little x there's a little um thing with uh Okay, basically you get two usable skills and um and so, so the first one where the star you see the picture of a girl with and then with the X uh it's basically me and um basically each character gets a unique unique skill that they can use for um Yeah that well it's not unique but basically each character gets a skill assigned to their um assigned to to like them to their I'm having trouble finding the words today, but basically, like, if I do a different character, that character will come with a different um skill. So there's some um, it's and then so when you play with some others, you will start with a different in initial ability. Now the second item, which I haven't got yet, but you can see blacked out with the Y. I should I should add that I'm playing this on the controller, and so I'm obviously using the left the left stick to move, and then um you can also sort of do a dash ability, which I'm using using the right stick. So um it's like it's like the right stick the the right cursor stick is not as useful but definitely this dash actually allows you to phase through bullets so i'll do that right now although that was probably all right yep so that's that's definitely one of the the finer skills that you can do later to just basically um you know um sort of just help yourself get through some of the more di difficult parts of this game um so in in the third little equipment panel i've got a sword already oh what's this to Americans can curse three near nearby enemies with three ghastly afflictions. Okay, that's um actually a new item. So um yeah, so the third one is, is the saw, and actually I'll just show you in the screen right now, in the inventory screen. And uh, basically you can get different types of swords, and again they either modify like your bullets, and sometimes they could be stat boosters. Sometimes they will actually modify how you shoot. So if you notice, like right at the start, I was like sort of shooting a bit more constantly, but right now I'm just sort of. Sh Shooting in bursts, which, as the description says, I get to do extra damage. But the the problem with shooting in bursts is that if you've got a whole bunch of enemies coming at you at once, then it will be a bit more difficult to handle them. 
so um, that's definitely one of the things you need to take into account or basically adjust your gameplay in order to account for the weapons that you pick up. Um, I find at this stage, or I, I don't I, I know I've been playing for a fair bit, but at this stage I haven't really like memorized what each of the items does because mainly it's a bit hard to distinguish them based on the looks. So I mean, I mean, other more expert people might be able to um, give you some better insight on how easier it is. But right now, that's not something I'm worried about right now. Um, another another modifier is that um, also the sword has given me is that. Basically, my bullets are now plague bullets. So, as you can see right now, when it, whenever I kill a monster that's being afflicted by a plague bullet, that that it will explode into smaller bullets, which also infect nearby monsters with plague. There's also other um, there's also there's also other afflictions such as um, ooh, okay, there's also other afflictions such as fire. Well, not afflictions, more like just types of um, bullets that types of um, elements that your bullets can take in is basically like fire, ice and that sort of thing. So and then and then occasionally you come across these elite monsters which will obviously drop an item, kind of upgrade and maybe a potion. Now potions are like pills in the binding of Isaac. Um, right now you won't know what it does but uh, and only you will know what it does after you've actually used it so um, that's definitely something you can sort of just have a bit of a risk for and um, so um, there's probably like six, six or seven different potions, so I just picked up another one. I don't know what it does, but so I'm gonna try it now. It says I feel better. That basically means I get healed for a bit, bit. It means I get healed for a bit of health. So and basically, basically these effects are random and obviously add a little um sort of variety to the game, so to speak. And um and certainly a little, you know, a little more fun, a little more enjoyment, a little more of the unknown. So it's like now you can see in the bottom right. Um, that I know what the potion is now because I've already taken it. And then here there's like a shopkeeper that um, is like, okay, well, there's a random chest with an item. Uh, I'm going to pay 70 bucks to take a random potion. The blood fuse stick, that's um, that's basically like a slowdown. It slows down all the monsters around me and um, see, it's sort of like a slow down time thing. So, you know, basically all the bullets will be slower. I can sort of dodge bullets a bit more and so on and so such. So, so. Then there's a few more, I, I feel there's a few more negative effects than positive, so um, some people may choose not to actually bother taking these potions at all. There's of course one character that allows you to identify which potions, allows you to identify the potions uh, at the start, like you don't have to take one to begin with, and so that may make it easier for some people, that may make it harder for some people, but quite frankly I don't think they really they take that much of a significant difference. Um, in the top left you can see as usual your HP and basically if you take one hit then you lose one then you lose one half of the of the health bar and then you know it's kind of fairly standard there's really nothing much I can say about it and um, of course when you take the potions you, you and then of course when you pick up the little health drops as you have made no notice already by those red squares um, you, you obviously heal health as it is, and um, there's also, there's two different types of it, obviously. So smite a nearby enemy, return some of his life to you. I never actually use this because I'm um, like I, I feel like I can get by with just health drops, but I mean I'll use it right now, and I um, mean it's like hey I can kill a nearby enemy. I um, actually wonder if it works on elite, so I'll be interested to try that one out. Yeah, that will be that will be this video's experiment. Um. So it's sort of a roguelike in the sense that um, basically all the worlds are basically randomly generated and the monsters are randomly generated and even there's some variety in the bosses. Oh, the music has changed. Um, but um, I should add that one thing that's really sort of gotten me into this game is the music. And um, the music is in overall very calming, it's very easy to play. It, it feels like, you know, I could just relax and enjoy the game and because the... Um, because each of the runs are usually like not very long to begin with, it's like I don't need to worry about sort of like accidentally sinking myself in for too much. It's like once you're a complete player, a full complete run will take probably around 30 minutes or so, and um, that's and since they're basically limited to four worlds, and um, yeah, since they basically follow uh, limited to four worlds, there's basically like a maximum time limit unless you're the kind of guy who likes to like really explore and then like try to find out every single secret and to be honest there's only like two or three unique or two or three special features of each floor um that you can sort of discover so it's like it's it's, it's like it's not it's not like it's chock full of content it's not like there's they they've sort of 
deliberately introduced extra panning just to make the game long. It feels like they purposely knew they wanted to make a short enough game that people can can play for 30 or so minutes and um or or even less and to to provide a relaxed environment in which um play certain players can sort of just adjust the level of difficulty. Um and that's that's actually one thing I haven't touched on yet. It's actually that um you can actually adjust the difficulty of the game. Um, on the on the start screen, there's like basically, like before you enter the portal, basically, um, there, there's like a hard mode setting that you can just basically switch on and then leave it at that. Um, cool. And then um, uh, cool. and then there's also like um, if you hadn't if you were paying attention to the screen a bit earlier, you will notice that I passed by an altar with a skull on top of it. Those things will also like. What happens is that when you when you activate them, they actually they actually call it desecration. When you desecrate the altar, <laughs> a monster will spawn, and when you defeat that monster, it will and it will increase the difficulty of the whole run basically. And so that's actually one feature. That's actually one other feature I really like about this game because it allows you to set the difficulty whenever you whenever you feel like it. And so if you want it to be harder, then there's certain there's certain things you can do to tweak your um, tweak tweak how like how much you want to challenge yourself. Um, just trying to think of what others I might have, might have covered. Um, another thing worth noting is that um, you will not always go through the same worlds each time. Uh, there will be like basically different worlds that you will randomly again it's it's randomly picked from, but there's only like at each stage there's, there's only like two or three different worlds that you can that you can sort of just be. I suppose teleported to upon completion of each level, so it's um it's not a big deal. Um, uh, how does might this guy know? Actually, I can't. That's interesting. Well, that's um that's something something new I've learned, which is nice. Um, but I mean, otherwise, yeah. Um, there there is a bit of variety. There is a bit of variety in. I mean, the monsters are all pretty much the the monsters are all pretty recognizable. And um, so it's it's um, behavior becomes predictable enough, but it's not it's not like oh I'm gonna see the same monsters every single time because occasionally it will switch up the world so things won't be um, as boring or predictable which which is something I really like. And um, but at the same time it's not like super hard in that you need to be able to memorize like a, a compendium of say like 140 monsters just to really understand what each one is doing because ultimately most of them are pretty much doing the same thing they either swarm around you or they will induce some type of bullet hell that um or just bullet pattern that you will learn how to dodge and see so it's basically like within each progression of um a certain world there, there will always be a new monster so for this layer that um you can see the reddish skull kind of things that just shoot single bigger bullets and um, I mean, I mean, it's and then once you see them, once you recognize them, you sort of just understand how they work and sort of just know how to dodge them as well. Um, this game is definitely not one of those where you can sort of just run, like sort of just run in and then do a romp because because you will obviously be overwhelmed with monsters. So some, I mean, ideally you will play a little cautiously, but uh, as what as you may have noticed already in the first wall on one of the floors that if you stick around for too long, then um. Basically, that there's a message at the bottom that will say, um, like, but darkness is approaching. If your darkness is approaching, better get away quick. Uh, better get away quickly. And basically, what happens is that um, it's sort of like a. Well, it's gonna. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be hard. Well, it's not gonna be hard to just demonstrate it, but basically, it's sort of like the. There will be a color change coming from the bottom of the screen, from the bottom of the map, up onto where you are. And um, the other thing is that the exit portals are always gonna be like. Um, the exit portals are always going to be like somewhere near the top, so it's like pretty much each floor you know where your plague is now exceptionally virulent. Hmm, that's new. And here's the here's the other upgrade that I actually forgot to mention. It's actually a grimoire, or basically like a like an evil, basically like a book. And um, basically it will just um fire at extra enemies. Of course, again it has um different modifiers, different types of bullets depending on the grimoire you pick up so um again that adds to the variety and you know i basically now have like a full set of items in which basically helps me sort of plow through the monsters fairly easily i mean it's sort of like i could just drift through i can sort of just um like not have to worry too much i could just dodge the pulls i can dodge the bullets and i just basically make sure i'm not taking any silly damage and um 
it's something so far it's pretty fine and dandy so yeah one thing i didn't touch on is that uh, but you will have noticed already is that um the goal of each layer is to get to the exit portal which goes down to the the, sec the, the next floor um which is well that's not a good one um basically the goal is to get to this kind of portal and it just basically takes you to the next layer and um just try to um and of course as i said before if you take too long then um uh yeah if you take too long then this darkness thing will creep up from the bottom of the map uh this shadow that's passing over me that's just nothing that's just a feature and um so there's definitely something not to worry about too much but certainly it's um certainly at first glance it can be a little worrying so to speak it's just like what's all these new things it's like i don't know what they are and then um so and so on and so forth so um just trying to think what else i've touched i haven't touched on yet I, okay so throughout the game you, have, you probably have noticed me kill some some elite monsters and um the boss as well and some of them have sort of, sort of like drop upgrades and sorry i should clarify one thing when i talk about elite monsters you may have seen some of these there there's like a unique type of monster that sort of it's a different color and also takes a bit longer to kill and in in general in gaming terminology we refer to them as elite because they're like elite versions of our the the standard monsters that you see so and uh, but what they do is that they can drop an item so basically they can drop and drop a like a permanent upgrade which is basically like the organs we see here so it's like here i got an organ which is like an eye and then affects damage plus 10 percent here, this one's got a bit more damage plus 0.25, ice damage plus 20%, expanded insight and so on. I'm still not sure what stuff like the expanded insight does, but um, certainly there's, there's quite a variety of these upgrades. So it's so like here, which I got fairly recently, it's like your plague is now exceptionally virulent. And then here, and then on the right, you can sort of just see the stats and just see how I'm doing. So, um, certainly a fair amount of variety in the item that also, it's the only, um, I, I guess I guess my only like right with these upgrades is that they seem fairly minimal and um they don't like really like drastically change the outcome of a game. It's like ultimately you just need to know how to dodge and you need to know how to play bullet hells and you should be fine for the most part. And um of course more experienced players will be able to play through um play through with fairly minimal upgrades. So here this is one of the elite monsters I was talking about. You can see it's a different color. That has a, has a more advanced bullet hell pattern and as soon as I kill it, it drops something that's essentially an upgrade for me. So um, this one was a plate damage. Plate damage plus 30% which is actually quite useful since I'm actually, I've got a... Because I'm actually firing plate bullets right now because of this um, sword. Yeah, fire plate bullets. Yeah. Now what's this grimoire do? Fires three chilling bullets. Now I just need to double check what the other one does just to make sure I'm getting a better deal. So this is fire one extra foes. I would like to have more bullets, so I would definitely take this one to go. And I uh, will go down to the next floor. And I'm already fighting the boss of the second one. And um, you already noticed that it's like, as I said before, there's only four walls. And um, so a as a result, it's like, it's not, it's, it's definitely not designed to have like really, really super long runs. Like say in the Binding of Isaac or Enter the Gungeon, where after you've been playing a while, it's like, because, because you have to keep going deeper and you have to end up exploring more for than each run basically ends up taking longer unless you actually you know you're smart enough to know what to look for what to and what what's not important and so on and so and such so it's definitely one of those things that um i really appreciate about this game so um bosses in general they're just generally um fairly standard bullet hell kind of things and each of them have their own unique patterns but after a while in my opinion they're fairly easy for people to figure out and just understand how to deal with them so I, I wouldn't say that this game is meant to provide any kind of serious challenge at first but of course if you're bored there's always the opportunity to as I've said before to make the game a little more difficult for um you know basically people um so, oops okay there's um there's also a lot um so far I haven't found any like special secrets that really uh deserve any mention but um but what I would do now is sort of just I would sort of just try and rush to the boss and rush to the final boss as quick as I, as quick as I can because I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot at the moment now I'll, I'll still kill any elites along the way oh okay so this is one of those special features that um 
that make you know that um, occasionally you'll come across and this one is basically it's like you see this big thing there that's actually a forge that gives you a bunch of extra items which is um again it's one of those little things that is just like oh you know we'll just add a little flavor to the game and well for the devs and um you know it, it adds to the variety so once i get rid of those elite skeletons we will be able to see what's going on so we just keep splattering him with my ability keep damaging him a bit more and okay so that's a forge and basically you know it drops it drops some additional source now your bullets are strange follow absorbs bullets i still want to keep my play bullets nope okay so um nothing nothing much of an upgrade which was kind of a disappointment so but otherwise i'm not going to worry too much about it um just gonna just gonna head straight up. i'm not really gonna try and explore the map as much and um just sort of just show off a bit more so this is like a beholder kind of dude which is and um i mean you'll find that most of the monsters are sort of just fairly um i don't want to say generic it's more like um they're not they're not like creepy creepy but um they're, they're also I, I guess they're and i guess it's because of the cartoon nature is that and they pur they're purposely designing it this way that it's like it's not meant to be so much uh as um i don't know why i want to say here <laughs> Um, but I, d I know I do want the flames instead of the, the ice bullets because I feel the flames is probably a little, do a little more damage although I haven't actually tested it. It's, I haven't really seriously tested it but um, oh I mean yeah that's you know one of those things you could just sort of figure out by playing the game yourself and depending on how, on how long you've been playing it's definitely one of those things you can just get a feel for so it's not something you have to worry about too much. Now open 300 that's a lot I've got the money but in my experience, the shopkeeper usually hasn't been all that useful. So, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, okay, we'll head straight in. Be sure to check regularly for portal rash. Hmm. Well, moving on, uh, layer two. Is it layer two? I think health is less common, health is more common. I'm looking in the top right. I've noticed that, um, like, sometimes each floor will come with a random effect, and, but I, I haven't really sort of just, like, looked too much into it. So, I, I mean, I'm not going to think too much about it either, but um, definitely, it's sort of, again, adding variety, because that's what's most important when you're designing a roguelike game, is that you make sure that when you when you randomize things, there's enough variety for people to go, okay, here's a new, new, new experience every game, you know, it's like, eventually, I'll have to learn how to do things a little differently, and so on and such, so, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's definitely... One of, the, one of the key features of roguelike games and how um, basically they contribute to people's enjoyment of, you know, particular games. Now, that was a guy that was teleporting around me, so... Now this is four spirals of bullets. Nope, I was thinking about the other one. Not as useful to, not as useful to me, admittedly. I mean, the other one is definitely more useful because it's basically I can regenerate health. Ooh, there's another lead. So, this one's got a different bullet hell pattern that I need to be careful of and I'm obviously not doing very well in dodging him but thankfully he was fairly easily defeatable and he dropped a giant tooth which basically gives me more MP to cast my spells. I think I don't think I've actually touched on the MP in casting spells but um with the with each active ability you obviously you may have noticed already that you need mana to actually spend on them and obviously I feel like the mana is not really so much a it's not a mechanic that's really being fleshed out as much, it's just sort of just there and it's simple enough that it works and it's, it's, um, it's also simple enough that one does not... Um, like, I feel it could use a little tweaks and a few more improvements, but ultimately it's... Um, ultimately it's probably not a big deal. I mean, it's, it's probably one of those features that um, they put in and des either decided to keep it simple or like purposely didn't put too much work into it so it looks like I'm going the wrong way so gonna need to, gonna need to figure out where the exit portal is so if it's not on the right it's gonna be somewhere on the left so I'll just kill a monster oh okay I'm got a bit stuck there um and uh oh well I'll just grab some health while I can because I'm definitely a bit worried about my ability to deal with the the boss well more the final boss actually because the final boss is you know like the real bullet hell type environment which is um i mean it's interesting nonetheless so um, i mean i'm not i'm not going to complain too much but um certainly i would at least like to be able to show you it the final boss that is which is kind of just a giant skull but i mean <laughs> i mean oh 
Well, either way, we'll move on. Um, we'll do with the boss, and um, I think I'm I'm a bit annoyed at myself that I haven't actually sort of just sat down and shut up for a bit to actually allow you to listen to the soundtrack because I'm just so busy thinking of what things I want to say. But definitely, I I think I think it's um the music is something I really enjoy about this game, as I've said before, because it just allows you it's relaxing enough and it's not intrusive. Um. And that's, that's sort of the problem I have with some of the other games in that... Oops, okay, gotta be careful with this one. This time, this guy actually need, need to pay attention, so I do apologize for... Staying a little quiet at times, so... Alright. What are you gonna do next? Alright. I mean, ultimately, the behavior is fairly predictable, so... I mean, you, you sort of learn how to deal with them fairly easily, so... Again, difficulty-wise, it's definitely something you can modify, it's something you can adjust to your own benefit. 202, max HP 1, and find an impactful bullet every 10 shots. So look for an axe. Look for an axe that comes out every now and then. And here we're on the last level, which um, the music obviously takes a very different um, change, and um, which is quite nice. I mean, I, I really like how um, there's a different soundtrack for different worlds, and, um, and the sound I feel like the soundtrack really has been it's very it's very simple it's very repetitive but at the same time oh well not not at the same time it's the fact that it's simple and repetitive basically means it's you know very pleasant to listen to as actual background music or you know as actual like studying music and i found that um it's even good for sleeping music if you want just you know something a little i don't know different it's I mean, this one right now is certainly sounds a bit um, majestic, a bit wonderful, um, sort of just a bit starry, and it very and it, it, it really does suit this environment. And um, definitely, when you get to get the game on Steam, you can buy the soundtrack separately for like um, four dollars US. So if you if you really enjoy the music, I would definitely recommend purchasing it for you know listening listening to it separately on you know whatever it is you listen on music on these days. Um, but yeah, definitely for me, the huge selling factor for this game, or the, like, the huge appeal for this game for me was the music. And um, it's not just the bullet holes, it's not just the work lights. That, to me, is the music that really sold this game for me. And um, I mean, I mean, the, the only reason I bought it initially was that because it was just another work light that I had seen a bit of gameplay for and was actually interested in, so I was just like, oh, you know, it's... I found it on Chrono.gg and just thought, oh, you know, it'd be nice to check it out when... Uh, yeah, it was, only, it was on sale, like, last week. So I was just like, oh, you know, I'll pick up a copy, I'll check it out, because, you know, it's cheap enough and I've um, got a bit of expendable money to spend, so it's like, why not? So, yeah, I'm actually, I've actually been quite happy and pleased with this game. I'm, I'm, like, I'm glad I took the chance to try it out. So I just kind of want to open this chest to, uh, chest here to get a bit of help. Um, the goal, again, like the mana, I think is one of those things that just hasn't really been fine-tuned too much. And, um, that's for, I, I guess some people looking for a bit more complexity, it might, um, they might be a bit turned off at the simplicity of it. But then again, I, I feel like it was just sort of adjusted the same way in the music. It's like, you know, we're just putting a simple system and not sweat too much about it. So, really, um... I'm looking at the timer on my recording on, on OBS and um, I'm hitting 28 minutes so I would like to keep this down to about 30 minutes, this video down to about 30 minutes so I'm kind of just going to be a bit reckless and rush through and surprisingly not take damage there which is quite neat. So one more floor onto the final boss. So um, usually um, there, there's a couple of other like secrets that um, I probably could have uncovered if I had bothered to look around but I haven't so I'm not going to worry about it too much so I'm actually glad I opened that chest now because at least I've got some help to catch catch up on in case I um in case I take too much damage but I'm just gonna rush straight down to the boss and welcome to die. I'm not sure hmm. no, okay. Because it's not even just the gameplay I need I just need to um I also need to show you the unlocks and such. So I'll just do that and this is basically a generic classic bullet hell boss that won't like, pretty much like every other, once you figure out the pattern, it's pretty doable, so uh, it's... 
I mean, you can see here, it's like I've kind of just figured out the pattern already. Oh, uh, I definitely want to avoid those portals. And you know what? I won't mention what this portal does, and I'll try not to get hit by them, so that if you act, if you decide to get this game for yourself, you can actually see what it does. But I, as you can imagine, it's probably not a very positive effect. So <laughs> definitely want to avoid the. Okay, there we go. I was jolt you for a bit, do a bit more damage, and this boss has an, an you know some more additional, basically another stage of bullet hell, and I'm sort of just struggling a little to navigate through but again once you figure out the pattern it's pretty smooth sailing from there on so i would not be worried about it too much it's definitely again i will emphasize on the relative difficulty of this compared to say something like um super meat boy or i want to be the guy or okay I, that diamond is gonna be a bit annoying i will keep nuking you for a bit more health um yeah, the relative difficulty, not so much, and I feel I feel like they've designed this game for children, but that's a very baseless assumption on my part, and um, quite frankly, I haven't actually sort of like been in touch with the developers to just sort of get their understanding of that, so we'll just collect all this, and we'll go into the portal, and I found the professor, but he's utterly changed, he isn't the kindly mentor I once knew, or more than once I thought he had won. Hmm. This place, however, he has strengthened me. I have learned lost secrets. I feel real power coursing through my veins. There's kind of a bit of a backstory, but not it's not a deep one. The professor hoped to trap me here, but instead introduced me to my new mentor, the Death State. Little can withstand me now. Hmm. Alright, I will assume that's the end of this run. There we go, and then of course there's a score at the end, and then... Uh, this is basically like the professor's lab, and uh, okay, so here's the heart mode switch that's a crate. The cosmos trembles, and um, basically the, it's, a little, it's even more bullet helly than before. I've un unlocked a bunch of characters, which you can see here. We can basically just pick one fairly easily, and you know, just switch, 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 switch with the messages. Each of the characters has like a, diff a bunch of different attributes and such, and so there's like like the priest, there's the star child. Each of them has different ones, which is definitely fun to check out. Uh, there's like a basically an unlock sting. A bestiary and um i mean fairly generic stuff that you'll see as a kind of um how, how to say it um and then of course your stats so yeah it's good it's definitely got everything in the whole package and um definitely got a bit of variety and it's definitely simple enough to keep casual players interested in the game and like basically if they want to and basically if they're wanting to pick up a game that on, in the single section, you probably won't take more than 30 minutes, then I could definitely recommend Death State. So, yeah, so, as I've said so many times already, this is Death State, and um, I hope I hope, I hope this preview has been enough to sort of give you an idea of what the game is like. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. So with that, thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this content, there is a like and subscribe button for your clicking pleasure, and I will see you on the next video.